so i'll uh, continue where i left last time uh, trying to uh, uh, trying to see darul taradul aqlabul naql rikl irin consigning uh, is an entry relation uh, in the writings of ibn taymiyah uh, we are studying this thing uh, by karl sheri il top tool in the light of these things we are going to uh, see how ibn taymiyah tried to hmm. Uh, uh, have his own uh, view. Have his own uh, discourse. Uh, the discourse uh, which uh, stemmed from this, uh, basically trying to defend a canonical interpretation of uh, Islam or uh, revelation and uh, traditions of a uh, uh, prophet. So against uh, these uh, different uh, interpretations. So, so if you uh, say, so if you if you have in the uh, if, uh, in the uh, pyramid or the triangle, if you see how Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, uh, what was the aim? So the aim of sound and authentic uh, revelation. If you construct a triangle or a pyramid, so in the lowest app, there were philosophers, then there were Mu'tazilites, then there were Ashrites, but. Uh, and Ashrites had to be, uh, what I should say, superseded by by an interpretation which was have which which was somewhat admixture of sound reasoning and authentic uh, revelation, which will have in it elements of unity, clarity, and certainty or yakin uh, if you will translate it in terms of Arabic. So truth for uh, if I'm quoting, so I'll quote. Uh, the passage uh, verbatim and uh, try to uh, expand or, or elucidate uh, those uh, uh, what are sentences or words or paragraphs uh, and try to expand them to my understanding or to my uh, clarity which is a, a subject of course so for uh, truth uh, for ibn taymiyyah is the point uh, of unity, clarity, and certainty, yakin, at which the testimony of sound reason and that of authentic uh, revelation understood correctly and without any attempt to interpret it away through allegory or metaphor. Fully. It away, although allegory or metaphor fully coincide. At the opposite end of this pure lies point lies pure sophistry, safasta, in rational matters coupled with the unrestrained allegory karamata of the scripture so 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 so, so this is uh, that uh, the having a allegorical interpretation of a scripture should be allowed with a certain degree it should not lead to a wayardness or unrestricted freedom which will compromise the basic text of scripture so in the pursuit of his mission uh, to resolve conflict between reason and revelation, Ibn Taymiyyah elaborates around 38 arguments, wujuh. Uh, so how he uh, uh, wujuh arguments uh, uh, in, against uh, logicians, logical coherence of theologians, universal rule and integrity in purely theoretical terms of the premises and assumptions upon which it is based. So, so which... Uh, so the theoretical principle of uh, Imam Razi, which was basically, uh, he has, if you, uh, Imam Razi has a point by point how he has arrived at that uh, universal rule, which uh, is point by point uh, culmination of a certain uh, understanding of uh, theology, kalam, ashrayat, theology, and uh, the touching stone given by uh, final touch stone. Uh, in the form of a principle given by this uh, Imam Razi and which was left for uh, Ibn Taymiyyah to uh, somehow unpack uh, unpack uh, in a sense where a reason a revelation will be symbiotic in some sense so uh, the point is that uh, in, uh, for example, in doing so, for example, uh, so he might in doing so, Ibn Taymiyyah for some, uh, maybe, uh, maybe in 
in the eyes of some orientalists or some westerns uh, in the eyes of uh, western scholarship he might uh, seem uh, to be drifting uh, away towards uh, uh, rationality and somehow uh, leading the discourse prevalent that towards the oasis of uh, unreason or or uh, orthodoxy or what i should say stagnation but uh, or uh, some what uh, you could say rigid uh, dogmatic uh, agenda so for example this norman uh, kelder gives in that sense but a recent uh, scholar shahab din says that he might shahab ahmed his uh, point of view is that he was the original uh, synthesizer uh, of uh, uh, of uh, 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 there was a synthetic originality to uh, ibn taymiyyah's uh, thought so uh, uh, so yeah. so so the historically how he is judged favorably or unfavorably there are uh, maybe different uh, opinions uh, to it that a particular uh, streak of uh, uh, revisiting or claiming uh, a tradition which was uh, 1500 years ago uh, will lead to obscurantism or it lead to a medieval uh, assertion in which is uh, not uh, which is a misfit to the spirit of modern times or you can say as it was a valid in the opinion of some people it was a very genuine uh, attempt uh, to uh, rescue rationality as well as a revelation and a healthy relationship of the two for example uh, uh, so uh, maybe uh, ibn taymiyah if you it is he was, he was not only the uh, how uh, mutazilites how ashrites uh, res- do- in the historical sense how uh, ashrites uh, reached their uh, stage uh, of uh, critiquing mutazilites but uh, but what was uh, left what was in in the process of trying to engage one ideology one uh, school with another school so we absorb elements of uh, the school so the point uh, which uh, in the time i wanted to emphasize that that spoils from a defeated mortalism uh, uh, his position was he was he's free to think to take the spoils from a defeated mortalism and and reach there with and hence for the orthodox islam so these things also they are not uh, acceptable so uh, not acceptable so he uh, in the time uh, while he was trying to uh, somehow uh, critique the position of uh, reason uh, primacy of reason or revelation he just could find where the uh, the rot stemmed from uh, taking and uh, the elements of uh, mutazilite uh, the uh, the assimilation of mo- certain mutazilite doctrines uh, within uh, uh, within the ashrite uh, theology so in the process maybe philosophers uh, like afara b kindi uh, ibn sina so all of these have been for example point by point how uh, if we will uh, see how he tries to find uh, Uh, he find trying to find a uh, loopholes or uh, something which is ms uh, uh, which within the time in uh, discourse for example in case of uh, in case of uh, in case of alkindi in case of alkindi uh, what uh, so philosophers starkly ab- abstract concept of divine oneness with the attendant radical denial of most of all denial attributes is one of the targets ibn taymiyyah attacks most uh, consistently and relentlessly in dar tardud although maybe for example although although uh, al-kindi was very much vociferous 
for example in joining uh, Mu'tazili theologians in defending uh, Islamic beliefs against materialists, uh, Manichaeans, atheists and rival philosophers and breaking ranks with Aristotelian and Neoplatonists. But uh, on the issues of creation of world, resurrection of body, possibility of miracles and prophetic revelation and ultimate uh, destruction of the world, all of which he upheld in conflicting with uh, Islamic teachings but in opposition to the Greek philosophical tradition and later philosopher, although he could uh, retain some of the beliefs, uh, core Islamic beliefs, while uh, trying to have uh, some uh, aspects of Muhammad's lights uh, into his uh, well done show, but uh, somehow his, uh, how he uh, pursued the sifat of Allah uh, with the creator, with the rest of the universe, uh, maybe at the time I was, I was also not uh, comfortable uh, when he talks of uh, so in case of uh, Farabi also, so the arguments of Farabi were primarily from uh, very from linguistics and grammar and logic. So for example, majority of uh, Farabi's uh, writings uh, dedicated to logic, philosophy of language, relationship between abstract logic and philosophical terminology uses to express logical relations on one hand and ordinary language and grammar on the other hand. The issue of logic and language represents a cardinal point of contention in the debate between reason and revelation. In fact, constitutes a major element in Ibn Taymiyyah's attack on abstract philosophical reason and his attempt to reconstitute rationality on more into two everyday reasons. So this is he has such this point where he is not agreeing with Farah. So in case of Ibn, Ibn Sina, maybe uh, Ibn Sina, maybe uh, Ibn Taymiyyah had been harsh on uh, Ibn Sina in interpreting uh, the Sifuzat uh, and Sifat of Allah with regard to the universe and uh, the concept of a resurrection, how he interprets resurrection and how he also try to exclude truths of commerce and truths of uh, elite, uh, the distinction. So all of these things were not uh, acceptable to Ibn Taymiyyah. So before we are going to uh, come to the how he critiqued uh, Western uh, universal principle of, uh, of Imam Razi, so we are going to see point by point what what was the discomfort uh, of different scholars uh, uh, with, uh, with which uh, Ibn Taymiyyah had some uh, uh, difficulty in uh, in uh, relating to, for example, Ibn Sina's view of logic as a key to philosophy, as an indispensable indispensable tool that leads knowledge to essential nature of things, a concept of logic that <coughs> Ibn Taymiyyah attacks emphatically. So this is the point. So in the same way, in the same way, in the same, uh, uh, in the same uh, manner, uh, the important figure in Islam uh, of uh, Al Ghazali, for example, uh, for example, maybe with, uh, Imam uh, Ghazali, in the time I had love and hate relationship. You could say he appreciated some uh, portions of some aspects of Imam Ghazali while uh, critiquing him on other aspects of uh, Ghazali. So the point where he uh, appreciating him was how he tried to deconstruct uh, the philosophical aptitude or approach of uh, these philosophers in trying to uh, in trying to dismantle the, uh, them in the background of how uh, to uh, how the revealed uh, how something called uh, revelation is there, but he the negativistic way of uh, trying to deconstruct uh, philosophy and uh, trying to replace it with mysticism, and the concurrence of uh, truths of commoners and truths of elites. So on these counts, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, for example, disagreed with him. So for example, uh, for example. Uh, 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 
and uh, and maybe the, he appreciated him for example the doctrines of ibn sina or Rushud. so for example uh, which who were basically peripatetic who were aristotelian so so aristotelian view was uh, how to see the world is eternal and the idea that god knows only universal concepts and not particular instantaneous uh, instantaneousness and impossibility of uh, physical resurrection after death so these uh, core principles were somehow critiqued by Imam Ghazali in the background of how Imam uh, Ibn Sina and uh, Ibn Rushd tried to reinterpret these uh, Greek uh, uh, these uh, ideas uh, within the with model of some uh, transformations how to revelation and reason revelation and uh, scripture uh, within the Islamic uh, tradition <coughs> so one uh, and for example uh, for example Ibn Taymiyyah also did not condemn Kalam in the sense of disciplined reasoning although you can say you can and the impression one gets that maybe Ibn Taymiyyah was not against uh, reason or it was against a uh, Kalam in the first first reading you can uh, read it that way or from a distance you can read it that way but uh, deep down you can say he was a uh, also a uh, he was converted to a certain uh, theolo uh, kalam theology which which defended a certain a certain uh, rationality which was not necessarily in confrontation with the revelation so he was also a sort of kalam theologian or rationalist of a certain uh, order so Ibn Taymiyyah did not condemn Kalam in the sense of disciplined reasoning about theological matters outright. Rather, he distinguished between Kalam is Sunni and Kalam is Bidi. That is between orthodox and heterodox way of reasoning about religious truth. So I'm primary motivating factor in his opposition to Kalam was his view that it was divisive and schematic. schismatic. Uh, schools often differed bitterly over points and doctrine owing to different notions of what reason was presumed until and just as commonly on account of variant starting assumptions and of founding actions determined by overall philosophical premises of school in question. So Ibn Taymiyyah's life project was in a sense to transcend school divisions by reuniting the Muslim religious community on a reintegrated theological platform that was based entirely directly on the understanding and approach of Salah, whom he held to be of necessity of more correct than later theologians and as a corollary to this characterized by a completely high degree of consensus if not outright uniformity in their apprehensions of theological truth so now the point is that uh, hmm. So the point is that, uh, for example, while reading, uh, writing the critique of uh, Aristotelian uh, logic, which we'll uh, discuss in detail in the next lecture, Radul Mantaki. So, so what? Uh, so he maybe advocated the old style reasoning, like that of uh, Kias. Uh, uh, So the way uh, Al Ghazali did not uh, reject uh, logic or per se, but he uh, he interpreted he used the effective use of logic uh, in uh, actually theology and jurisprudence uh, was very much uh, codified in his uh, the way he interpreted philosophy and logic. In the same way, in the, in the same way, you can say that Ibn Taymiyyah likewise educated for Jewish method of definition by description, wasp over the philosophical method of definition by genus and uh, specific differences known as Hadd. So, so when we, uh, so if you uh, read uh, arguments of how uh, uh, the uh, how he even found uh, loopholes in Aristotelian uh, logic of uh, how your logic and linguistics uh, uh, these two disciplines overlap and how our, how understanding of uh, particulars and generals uh, 
somehow uh, there is a mismatch in them. For example, uh, a generic uh, characteristic, uh, how it can be related to a specific. A generic means anava and a specific means uh, uh, so generic and specific. So you can start from a generic principle and you can arrive at a particular principle or how to. So in the case of uh, when we have examples, which, which she has given examples, uh, Galur, that uh, they are, the Aristotelian uh, syllogistic reasoning is not uh, valid. Uh, and he has given it in, in, in the next lecture where we do. So here, so what he's uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, so I would summarize, we could summarize Ibn Taymiyyah is likewise I would get it for jurist method of definition by description of wasp over the philosophical method of definition by genus and specific uh, difference is known as had. So he, so he has a method of um, description how you describe a thing from in an empirical, an empirical, empirical sense. So although Ibn Taymiyyah also seems to have been influenced by critiques of uh, Mu'tazilites, uh, Al-Ghazali, Ibn Rushd, maybe he was uh, also aware of all these things. That's why he was able to reconstruct his own uh, thing uh, while uh, while also being aware of all these things. So how much he has absorbed those elements uh, uh, in his uh, things. So what makes Ibn Taymiyyah uh, unique or is that his uh, 10 volume that uh, uh, Radul Mantakin. So, so he, he could uh, somehow uh, uh, relate these co this corpus of uh, literature uh, with his uh, the basic doctrine of there is no uh, apparent or real contradiction between reason and revelation. He could trace this body through his whole huge corpus of uh, literature. Although for some uh, it is uh, that uh, 10 volume uh, literature, there are arguments which are uh, repetitive or it is uh, written in a disjointed uh, manner where there seems to be no in coherent internal unity but as if he is responding to different uh, uh, questions and answers in a disjointed way. But the whole uh, corpus of literature uh, supporting this basic argument makes him, makes that uh, study uh, very much uh, <clears throat> worthy to reckon with. For example, he said, perhaps the most salient and ingenious feature of Ibn Taymiyyah's thought and methodology is the fact that he did not banish reason in favor of entirely non-speculative traditionalism. Rather, he rehabilitated all the while preserving obvious meaning of the revealed texts by demonstrating that sound reason and authentic revelation never come into conflict, actual conflict. This is so because a revelation all inclusive and faultless contains within it perfect and complete uh, rational foundation. On the basis of this insight, Ibn Taymiyyah put forth philosophical interpretation and defense of tradition, thereby developing his own unique brand of what has possibly been termed as philosophical traditionalism. So this is it. <coughs> So, <clears throat> so for example, so for example, uh, For example, while Ashraites and its immediate followers, al and immediate followers did not uh, consider uh, the possibility of contradiction between reason and uh, revelation, but the later Ashraites and the last writing stone, which was uh, Fakhruddin Razi and Saifuddin al-Imadi, who took the most uh, when they inclined towards the negativistic 
doctrine, tahajjum, tajahum, and even towards philosophy, conceded not only the formal possibility but also the actual occurrence of real contradictions between reason and revelation, ultimately to formulation of a universal rule as a means of ironing out supported supposed incongruity. So now we are coming to the debate that uh, how. Uh, the later Ashraite theologians uh, who somehow um, in their scheme of writings or in the scheme of their formulation how they uh, superseded revelation uh, over uh, reason how they superseded uh, reason uh, with uh, uh, revelation with reason and how uh, Ibn Taymiyyah somebody, somehow uh, respond to that thing. <clears throat> for example with a specific reference to issue for prison uh, revelation time here false ghazal so for so it's a bit direct but so we're before coming to ice rate so you can just because uh, the the Tahfatul philosopher of uh, Imam Ghazali, maybe a lot of uh, the time also was uh, he profited from a lot of arguments from Imam Ghazali, although he also disagreed with him. So, if we to point of not seeming repetitive, if we say that uh, Ibn Taymiyyah faults Ghazali for launching a purely deconstructive attack against philosophers and for her contending himself as Ghazali himself states in his introduction talk. Without using any argument, he could lay his hands on to expose the philosophers in coherence and their tahafut, regardless of whether the argument was valid in and of itself. In this manner, Ghazali was satisfied, as Ibn Taymiyyah puts it, to confront falsehood with falsehood and despairing ultimately of the ability of reason to reach any reliable uh, conclusions in such matters, resort to spiritual unwilling kashf. And subject to experience duck as the surest means of arriving at truth and a proper understanding of revelation. Here, Ibn Taymiyyah paraphrases a passage. So, although he is uh, he is uh, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah is uh, and he is a uh, uh, who say not and he is uh, okay or he agrees with how Ibn Taymiyyah tries to demolish philosophers uh, in the defense of uh, religion or philosophical thinking uh, as a fundamental approach towards uh, uh, reality or revelation but he is not uh, comfortable uh, of uh, replacing uh, theology or taking refuge or uh, rescuing uh, religion uh, through a particular brand of mysticism or kash, whatever you want to call it, whatever it is, uh, how do people practice it? So, so, so the reliable reason and his replacement of uh, reliable reason uh, and to establish moral and cognitive certainty on ultimately subjectivity basis of uh, private uh, spiritual experience. So now I am coming to before <clears throat> So for the philosophers uh, who know the truth only comes through reason and reason pros proper is what Aristotle conceived it to be the demonstrative faculty operating deductively in terms of Aristotelian syllogistic. For Ghazali, reason may well be what uh, Aristotle conceived it to be, 
but that being the case it is ultimately of little use in reaching true knowledge of most important matters one important maybe point uh, which is very uh, the core of uh, this thing is that so even the time yeah, how he uh, constructs his project for him even time he conceives of his own project or is going well beyond that of al ghazali so he attempts to counter what is unsound with what is sound yakub bin fasad al and settle the issue of vexed relationship between reason and revelation definitely by demonstrating that true pure reason aqli sari positively agrees with and corroborates revelation and can more be plausibly demonstrated to do so in so far as ghazali conceived of his work in tahafat in purely deconstructive and negative terms laying the philosophers heretical doctrines to waste but without erecting in their stead a solid rational structural capable of demonstrating the inherent rational plausibility and consistency of a revelation then the darul altarabul at least in terms of ambition ibn taymiyah harbors for it was significantly beyond al ghazali's more circumcised uh, enterprise so like philosopher ibn taymiyah seeks nothing less than full resolution to the intractable stand off between reason and revelation albeit in terms radically opposed to those proposed by peripatetic predecessors so so ibn taymiyah has been significant not only on one side he might uh, he might uh, he, he might uh, disagree he might uh, disagree with uh, he might uh, disagree with uh, people um I might uh, disagree from peripatetics uh, aristotelians including farabi ibn rushd and uh, ibn sina for relying too much on philosophy uh, Uh, as compared to the core, his understanding of full core Islamic or revealed uh, scripture, and uh, simultaneously his uh, uh, his uh, maybe a partial acceptance of Ghazali in demolishing uh, Greek uh, philosophy uh, as a something ultimate uh, in the realization of ultimate reality. but uh, critiquing him of introducing certain uh, uh, for uh, not uh, replacing that uh, not uh, having a healthy alternative uh, where you could uh, you could uh, somehow uh, replace that whole scale philosophical inquiry or free skeptical or whatever that uh, inquiry with with a particular uh, a rational mode of uh, approaching things uh, which was in consonance or which was uh, in uh, synchronicity of uh, uh, with the way revelation and uh, the healthy relationship of revelation and the reason so he was not per se against uh, rationality so he was only wanting to rehabilitate rationality Uh, in a or uh, or peculiar understanding of uh, rationality which was not uh, against uh, revelation so the aql and the ilm and the uh, aql and the wahi uh, the quranic wisdom uh, could be appropriated uh, in the in his enterprise of uh, things and how he did it uh, Uh, and how he tried to do all the things uh, demolishing the aristotelian syllogistics from the rules of uh, reason logic and uh, linguistics which is our um, in radul mantiki that's a significant uh, study <coughs> and how he could uh, see the uh, aqli sari and naqli sahi aqli sari and naqli sahi so how he could uh, have Uh, the combination of the two towards uh, a perfect uh, uh, the way to approach uh, uh, things so ibn taymiyah's uh, 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 goal is nothing less than full reintegration of reason and revelation into a coherent epistemology in which a rehabilitative intuitive reason and unaffected straightforward reading of scripture are as if 
following from a common font, fully collaborative and mutually reinforcing. MIT tall order indeed. So, according to writer, but any time attempts his feet with uh, command uh, or attention for the remainder of his time. So, how he tries to do it? Maybe it's a grand how much he has been successful uh, in doing that. Uh, so, maybe, but at least uh, he has been able to, he has uh, shown us uh, the pointers uh, that it is possible. So, whether he has been successful or not, it's maybe debatable uh, in eyes of, uh, but at least he has uh, given us the pointers. So, it uh, 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 the symbiosis of reason and revelation uh, 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 in a non contradictory manner. So, now we are coming to uh, this how he uh, fundamentally how he uh, comes to incoherence of universal rule and the theoretical impossibility of contradiction between a reason and revelation. So, so how Fakhruddin Razi, now we are coming to the final point, how Fakhruddin Razi somehow formulated or articulated his uh, understanding of uh, preeminence of a uh, reason over uh, uh, revelation by using uh, Aristotelian uh, syllogism or reasoning. For example, law of extruded middle and law of uh, contradiction. For example, a statement is true or it is not true. Or uh, a statement uh, must be uh, rejected. So if A is B, B is C, this means A is C. So, so these are uh, some, uh, some uh, one is a law of contradiction and uh, law of excluded middle. So he applies them uh, to uh, his... Uh, understanding of how he sees the relationship of reason and uh, revelation so for example uh, according to uh, according to for example if you paraphrase uh, uh, if you paraphrase in uh, time in darul attaradur quoting uh, Quoting Ibn Taymi, quoting uh, Razi, so if he says, if spiritual and uh, rational indications or re revelation and reason or the obvious of what meaning of revealed texts and definitive conclusions of rational thought or other ways of phrasing it are in conflict, then either one, they must be both accepted, which is impossible, as this would violate the law of non contradiction, claiming both P and not P. Second, they must both be rejected, which is also impossible in as this would violate the law of excluded middle neither p not not p precedence must be given to revelation which is impossible since revelation is grounded in reason such that if they were given priority to former and later the revelation or reason this would amount to rejection of both and by extension that would be grounded in reason namely revelation so one must give precedence to reason or revelation so so if you have a reason and revelation and if revelation is grounded in the reason so if you reject uh, uh, reason means it will nullify uh, revelation so from this argumentation you could uh, uh, see that uh, reason should be taken precedence over uh, revelation and if uh, revelation ha is somewhat uh, not according with uh, reality figuratively or so we have to uh, interpret uh, revelation uh, figuratively and he has introduced a term tawil to negate the apparent meaning of revelation but refraining from assigning it a definite particular metaphorical meaning tafil so this is how imam razi formulated uh, his uh, uh, his dominance of uh, reason over revelation uh, using Aristotelian syllogism, syllogistic uh, understanding. But uh, here Ibn Taymiyyah gives fundamentally he an alternate uh, formulation, for example, what he says, for example, in the namely, the truth of relation can be established only through rational means, for it is only through reason that we can establish the existence of creator and no authenticity of relation. Ibn Taymiyyah laments that Razi and his followers have made this into universal rule for interpreting revelation as it relates to God's attributes and other issues in which they deem reason to be in contradiction with what scripture affirms. Some of them including Imam Razi himself add to this notion of uh, 
spiritual indicums are in fact inherently capable of engendering certainty. So is it time uh, somehow for him the way his uh, reinterpretation of uh, this Tawil and uh, and uh, for example figurative interpretation of Tawil and only taking the obvious uh, or uh, interpretive or zahiri meaning of things uh, and suspending the meaning which is called Tafweed. So he is not uh, comfortable with these uh, sort of terminology and and he is saying that it is as if he is, uh, you are changing the meaning Tabdeel and and basically there are two things you have Vaham so you are uh, the reasoning which is being uh, being uh, being uh, being placed uh, which, which is being um, forwarded in these in this uh, is that uh, you are using uh, a sort of reasoning which is called waham or takhayun so you can you can be free in your whatever you can think or draw conclusions or tahrif or uh, tawil so he so so this is the way he critiques it so 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 he according to him the pure rationality cannot be uh, necessarily is in contradiction with the uh, revelation because the rationality or the real re reasoning which is uh, being there uh, so it is it can be either uh, what I should say takhayul or it can be uh, it can be derived from uh, tahrif or tabi so that was the point how uh, as a construction in an, how he in specific ways how he tried to uh, reconstruct or how he tried to demolish those uh, apparent or real uh, supposed contradictions in Ashraite uh, theology of uh, Imam Razi and uh, try to show them that uh, they are not uh, rational in the rational sense they are takhayul or they are tawil that is uh, the point in how he so how he did it but by the rules of reasoning using uh, arguments from uh, syllogism linguistics uh, grammar and logic <coughs> so so now comes uh, for example now comes uh, the point uh, of uh, sound reason so so which I was uh, saying uh, the Aklisari and Akli uh, Naklisari so and, uh, and how the symbiosis of Aklisari and Naklisari uh, will basically leave uh, will basically bypass or circumvent uh, this uh, Takhayul uh, uh, and this Vaham or Takhayul or uh, Tawil so, so how we can uh, reconstruct Akli Sahi and Nakli Sahi and Nakli Sahi and Akli Sahi. The proper combination of sound uh, reason and authentic uh, revelation, uh, which will uh, lead to that triangle of unicity, clarity, and certainty or yakin. Which, if you want have in the descending order, uh, maybe Ashrites, then Mothazalites, then philosophers. So you can in time in time you ask that if we use sound uh, reason and authentic revelation, uh, so in the lower forms, so philosophers are at the lower ebb than the Mothazalite and Ashrites. So that's it. So he had problems with Ibn uh, Imam Razi, but he was more in consonance with uh, Ghazali. So you can go down and down and down. So for that, what he he also uses the arguments that uh, going to other. For example, you can uh, sometimes it's not good to ask a question uh, ans by answering it. So you sometimes say you cannot you answer a question by asking that you cannot ask this question because the question doesn't arise. Or you cannot ask this question. Why he? For example, why he, the apparent or the real uh, problem of revelation and reason? So how he critiques is, for example, he critiques, he argues that philosophers, for example, their internal divergences in the different schools of philosophers, Peripatics, Aristotelians, Ibn Sina, even Stoics, 
epicureans so in the different schools of philosophies have their internal divergence are greater than those that separate distinct religious communities muslims jews and christians indeed he argues that philosopher difference with regard to astronomy alone with which is computational mathematical subject that figures among the most objective and accurate of their sciences are greater than differences among any of the various sects of muslims as for metaphysics the leading philosophers themselves concede their inability to reach any kind of certitude regarding it whatsoever rather their discourse on metaphysical matters amounts to no more than weighing various probabilities and hazarding judgments of likelihood and probability so this is the point so you cannot uh, so so maybe this is not i'll not uh, consider that uh, this is a valid argument but you can say in uh, rhetoric or in, you can say in that that uh, you cannot show that in your inconsistency showing that the person who is uh, pointing that inconsistency is also is standing on an inconsistent uh, ground in terms of so you are formulating an argument uh, but uh so you have to see how he was not only responding as a scholar maybe he was uh, also a proponent of certain uh, theology on ideology where you can also see in the time uh, as a debater apart from being jurist or logician also so so grounding here so in the time and diverse to undermine universal rules main premise namely giving precedence to revolution over reason would amount to rejection of the very thing that grounds revolution namely reason which would fatality uh, undercut a revolution grounding here means that reason is the basis on which knowledge, our knowledge of truth and revelation rests that is reason grounds the revolution not ontologically but epistemology so this is an important point so what uh, according to taimia uh, so reason should go, ground grounds revelation not ontologically so revelation has its own standing its being is independent of uh, rationality but it will provide epistemic justification for revelation also so reason or rationality should support or it should prove or it should uh, it should be in symbiosis with revelation but a uh, revelation has its own symbiotic or it has its own ontological uh, standing it exists on its own merits or grounds uh, which will encompass a reality which is cannot be covered or encompassed by rationality but you can have a rationality is not exclusive of a uh, revelation also so so we are maybe different uh, thinkers for example who oh. so for example uh, nicolas here so humbly uh, quotes uh, that uh, humbly uh, tradition ibn taymi held firmly the position that scripture was in no way depend on rational arguments either for establishment of its truth or for explanation of its meaning so in that for example the so aqliyat which is rational consciousness uh, so which which uh, so every product of reason maqul so that's opposed to revelation is in fact extrinsic to set of valid rational judgments that ground the knowledge of revelation from from this ibn taymi concludes that challenging any of these particular judgments of reason does not in fact undermine foundations of revelation so if you the apparent or real contradictions of uh, rationality uh, which so if you challenge those uh, rational arguments um, that doesn't mean that you are critiquing uh, revelation a revelation is stands on its own <clears throat> so the point is that uh, 
so the time a challenge plus force and tradition notion what it means for our knowledge of revelation to be grounded in reason by our in essence what we call reason does not in as many imagine constitute one indifferentiated category such like that of impinging any of various conclusions so now comes the very important point so if there is an apparent uh, or a real contradiction how of a rational of a valid rational reasonings with regard to revelation uh, or so how we can uh, somehow uh, what is the methodology of it for example if there is a rational proof, proof which is called conclusive there can be conclusive proofs or there can be inconclusive proofs so dalaile akli so they may be kati or they may be zanni so a rational proof can be conclusive or inconclusive kati or zanni in the same manner scriptural proof may be conclusive kati or it may be uh, inconclusive so if the rational proof and scriptural proof the kati and zanni of both kati of the both rational proof and scriptural proof uh, somehow coincide so it both of them will coincide so or if ra the rational proof and scriptural pr proof one of them will coincide other will not coincide or them both of them will not coincide so the point comes if both of them coincide or both of them don't coincide rational proof or akli proof scriptural proof so that's not the problem the problem arises if a rational proof is uh, contradicting with the uh, scriptural proof or vice versa so there the problem arises so which was uh, formulated by imam raji so there uh, what important uh, point is what was the methodology which was uh, given by uh, 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 by uh, ibn taymiya that is the main crux of it so we are come to the crux of it so how he tried to circumvent uh, that situation where uh, scriptural proof and uh, rational proof zanni and kati so if if one of them is not agreeing with the other or vice versa so they contradict some of their conclusions so how should we uh, somehow uh, uh, how can we somehow uh, make uh, an uh, amends or make uh, uh, how can we uh, judge them because ultimately you have a in juridical matters you have to you know, judge things can use arguments of syllogistic understanding of reaching a conclusion by using logic as a method but in matters of uh, interpreting things uh, of understanding or in matter of uh, matters of things uh, of applying those things in the real life uh, in the larger aspects of the world you have to judge so in judgments so, so if there is a Uh, if akli and nakli traditions either they both agree or both uh, disagree then that's not a problem the problem is one agrees the other disagrees or vice versa if one disagrees the other agrees so how should we uh, basically uh, how should we uh, come to that point how should we what's the way so for that uh, ibn taymiyah seeks to replace binary reason versus revelation with the alternative binary certainty versus probability he does so by arguing that individual arguments based either on what is considered reason or what is considered authentic scripture run the entire scale of epistemic value from certain to fallacious and that therefore precedence must be given according to in case to whichever argument enjoys greater probability weight regardless from which of the two sources knowledge reason and revelation it comes from so he is so not rather than uh, being talking in certitude in certain manner this is right or this is wrong so he is uh, he is replacing certitude with probable and probable with more probable and less probable so he is uh, don't talk in terms of black and white terms of oh, this is right or this is wrong the way uh, binary of reason versus revelation or vice versa he is talking of more probable certitude with probability and probability with less probable and more probable so ibn taymiyah has in essence equated two so reason and revelation epistemically while simultaneously subjecting each discrete element of both categories to common test of probability value 
he completes the second maneuver against the universal rule by declaring that issues not as everyone seems to assume of one reason versus revelation but rather knowledge versus uh, conjecture ilm versus zan can say or certainty versus probability more probable versus less probable indicators of truth so the conjectural understanding and the knowledge part versus knowledge part so you revelation versus reason he has shifted the debate to knowledge versus conjecture certainty versus probability more probable versus less probable indicators of truth taken together and arguments from one and five so addressing it means reason to ground revelation and establishing a circular uh, crucial binary of uh, so you are uh, just uh, shifting the debate from reason versus uh, revelation to certainty versus probability over against the inherent document dichotomy of reason versus revelation aiming to undercut the main premises upon which the universal rule is predicated so this is the way in the time of somehow addressed uh, this binary of how there is a apparent or a real contradiction of uh, rationality versus a revelation so he would uh, rather say that in case of the contradiction between the valid scriptural arguments and valid uh, valid um, rational arguments you can uh, say whether it may go to uh, whether you have to see it is uh, you have to see whether it's knowledgeable it's knowledge versus conjecture or it's probable so there can be more probable truth if something is more closer to something a valid judgment it may be more closer to something or it may be less closer to something so maybe he has in your earlier for example if you uh so for example if uh, so he has used various examples to uh, point uh, to the fact that uh, that uh, the if the there is apparent or real uh, contradiction from scriptural judgments in in favor of uh, rational judgments uh, so it doesn't mean the veracity of the later for example if there is a Uh, there is an example somewhere. So, if there is a uh, judge, if somebody asks a judge, uh, if there is a low senior judge, if there is a valid judgment, uh, and somebody is uh, so I so somebody is uh, referring that valid judgment to some superior uh, authority. For example, a person A. he is having a valid uh, he is he, he knows a certain uh, jurist he is referring to him but uh, in the when he refers a person a refers a person b for example he is himself a jurist he refers him to a higher jurist the higher jurist will uh, will uh, will give a certain judgment but the jurist who is referring him to the uh, law, 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 law who is referring the person to the higher jurist even though he is uh, disagreeing at the judgment of that very ju um, upper jurist it doesn't mean that the person uh, should uh, differ with this very person uh, the person this person is wrong in his individual capacity he may differ uh, uh, with the ruling of that higher judge but you cannot discount uh, his uh, maybe his recommendation uh, of larger body of uh, that uh, thing uh, giving the uh, in referring that judge to that uh, person so that individual person can in his eyes the both of them are maybe right in their own perspective so individual person who has referred him uh, he might be specifically right in his own understanding but he is also right in recommending him to a uh, authority in terms of authority in legal matters uh, so so the, so so in a apparent uh, example you can say the rationality and reason even if they are sometimes contradictory it doesn't mean contradiction in that uh, real sense but how much uh, so it's not necessary so so ibn taymiyah has given us method 
and how that method the veracity of that method can be useful or uh, successful or canonical in really resolving the uh, maybe difficulties of uh, or problems of reason and revelation uh, so it's also a big uh, thing uh, where uh, the rational judgments and the scriptural judgments whether whether they don't agree with each other so uh, imam razi gave a one uh, methodology where he gave a, a, a rationality precedence or reason but ibn taymiyyah shifted the debate uh, from that thing uh, and to a larger thing of probability versus certitude uh, knowledge versus a conjecture more probable versus less probable so at least uh, in uh, trying to uh, address uh, that debate and how he arrived at that's a separate story of how he went to dissecting aristotelian syllogism and trying to find loopholes from the arguments of linguistics and from the arguments of logic and so that's another part of uh, the story so i hope so we'll, uh, so we'll try to do it in there so that's the another part of the story so we'll continue thanks